All right, continuing on with our statistics test, uh, we're looking at our chi-square test but using what's called a Poisson distribution, uh, which is slightly different than our binomial and our uniform and our normal distribution. So it's a slightly different one that we could use uh, that we're going to talk about. All right, so let's look at this example, which we're going to come back to this example, but this would be one where you'd want to use a Poisson distribution. So the number of visits in an online store every minute is displayed. So every minute, how many people uh, appear. And so you see here when there's no visitors, that occurred, no visitors for a minute, that occurred 115 times. One visitor was 148, 80 times it occurred that they had two visitors in one minute, uh, 25 times they had three visitors, and 12 times they had four or more. Grand total of 380 minutes that we're looking at. Uh, so the, they are stating this website that the average number of visitors would be about one every minute. Okay. And so what we want to do is we want to test to see if it's in fact going to do this. Now we wouldn't use a binomial distribution because we don't know what the probability is for each of these categories. So since we don't know what the probability is, we can't use a binomial distribution. Okay? Uh, we're assuming it's not uh, a standard deviation, a normal distribution, because it's not going to be, it's not um, equal. It's not peaked in the middle and equal and going down. So that's why we have to end up using this Poisson distribution. Okay, so Poisson distribution is basically it's an experiment that you want to count how many times something occurs over a specific measurement. So this could be distance, time, uh, an area, so how many accidents in a single city, um, how many, in this case, uh, we're looking at the number of visits every minute. Uh, another example would be cars passing through a toll booth every hour. Okay, so this would change over a certain amount of time. Okay, so that's where we're going to use this Poisson distribution. Okay. Uh, okay, so another example of this would be the an ice cream truck. So if an ice cream truck says they average about seven customers per hour, then we want to know what's the chances that only four customers would arrive at that time. So as you see, this doesn't have a, um, a probability. You know, there's a 50% chance that this many people show up. That's not normally distributed on either side, what we're saying is that it kind of peaks at 7 and then it falls down. So then we want to know kind of what's it going to be on either side. These are usually used for smaller numbers. So if you have like where 1's a peak or 7's a peak, okay, where you don't, you can't uh, balance it out on both sides. So we want to see how many, what's the chances that 4 would arrive. And that's where we're going to use our Poisson distribution. So our Poisson distribution is as follows. Lambda, which is this little which is this little uh, image right there. So lambda to the power of x, e to the power of negative lambda, all over x factorial. So lambda is your average number that it occurs. So whatever the average set was stated, so in the ice cream truck it would be 7. Euler's number, the e is Euler's number, which is a constant. It's on most calculators. It's like, it's like 2.718. And then x factorial basically means whatever your x is, Whatever your x is, you're going to be taking that and uh, multiplying every integer lower than it, or every whole number lower than it. So four would be four factorial would be four times three times two times one, which gets you 24. Okay, so that's how it works. And your calculator is able to do this too. Fairly large numbers, your calculator and uh, normal TI 83, 84 isn't able to calculate it beyond about or at about 70. It maxes out at. Okay, so let's look at this. So the ice cream truck averages seven customers per hour, and the probability, uh, we want to know what's the probability that only four customers would arrive in the next hour. So our lambda, which is our average for the whole thing, would be seven, and then x is how many customers actually arrive, which would be four. So that's going to be our x. So when we plug in our numbers, we end up with 7 to the power of 4 times e to the power of negative 7 all over 4 factorial. And what you probably want to do with this is do it piece by piece so you don't end up with a wrong answer. So you might want to take a second and plug it into your calculator to see if you get the right answer. When you plug it in, you end up you should end up with a decimal less than zero or less than 1. 0 0.0912 is perfect. That's about 9.12%. So remember these are in the decimals for the percentages. So that means there's about a nine, a little over 9% chance that only four customers would arrive when he's averaging seven. Okay. 
So now, let's say we want to do this where we have the same ice cream truck, so there should be seven, but what's the probability that they end up having two fewer than two customers? So that means they could have either one customer or no customers. Okay, It's the same thing as with your binomial distribution or your probability distribution where uh, you find each individual and then you add them together. That's what you're going to do with this. Okay, So you would find the probability of zero, find the probability of one, add them together. So as you see here, here's the probability of zero right here, which looks like it's 0.09%, and then the probability of one, which is 0.63%. So as you see, they're very low. So you just add them together, getting you less than 1%. So there's less than a 1% chance that they will get less than two people on their uh, ice cream truck visits. So that's how it is, and you basically just type it into your calculator, run it through, and it should give you your number. Okay, Okay. so let's look back at our previous example that we had about the, um, the online store. So our online store, here's our information again. You might want to take a second to write this down. Okay, so now that we've written it down, what we want to do is we want to find the Poisson distribution for each of those, for 0, 1, 2, 3, and then anything more than four, okay? And we want to find that. So what we'd want to do first is start our setup. So our step one would be identifying our uh, our null and alternative hypotheses. So with these, again, you just mention your uh, Poisson distribution. So which distribution are you going to use? Now, when you mention the Poisson distribution, you also have to mention what your lambda is because it will change if your lambda changes. So you got to make sure that's mentioned. And your alternative hypothesis is that it does not fit that Poisson distribution. Okay. Step two is our alpha. Alpha was 0.01. It's at the bottom of that previous slide. So our alpha is 0 .0, or 0 0.1, which is about a 90% uh, level of confidence. Followed by that, we want to state what test we're doing, which is our chi-squared test with a Poisson distribution. You could write that as well, but it's also mentioned in step one. So you don't really need to write that. OK, on to step four. Step four is our drawing. And step four is our drawing, which we're using our chi-squared test again. So you use your degree of freedom, which how many categories there were? There were five, right? So there were five categories. And then you use your sheet, OK? Use this sheet that you have. Look at a degree of freedom of four, because we subtracted by one, and then your 0.1 critical value. And you end up with 7.779 is your number, OK? And again, we've done our drawings for here where we've made it look like this and then we put that number right there. And again, we're looking for if it's greater than it, we reject it. So our step five would end up being if the calculated chi-squared value is greater than that, then we reject uh, the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative, otherwise we fail to reject. Okay, so we have all that stuff. Okay, so all that is um, up to step five. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to do all our calculations for our Poisson distribution. Okay, so we've got to do all the calculations, we have to do all that math, with uh, lambda to the x, e to the negative lambda, all over x factorial. Okay, So we've got to do all those calculations for all levels, for 0, for 1, for 2, for 3, and for 4 or more. Now, for anything more than 4, what you're going to do is you're going to do all the calculations for 0, so you're going to do all the calculations for 0 to 3, Okay, and then you're going to add all those up, and you're going to subtract them from 100%. And that's going to be your last category. So here's all the table, everything plugged in, everything filled out. So you see what our O is, and you see what our lambda is. Now, if I add all of these up, and I subtract it from 100%, or from 1 in this case, since I'm dealing with decimals, I get this last number. Okay, that's if you have anything that's either more or less, that's how you're going to calculate it. Okay, so that's going to be the easiest way of doing that. So you don't have to do it for 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 and 9 and 10, so on and so forth to do it. Find all the ones that you can to get nice round numbers and then subtract out the leftover. Okay, so now I've multiplied O times, uh, oh no, I've multiplied lambda times the total to get all of my E's. Okay, so I've multiplied all my O's, all my total observations, 380, multiplied by each lambda to find my expecteds for each. 
and so my expecteds are there, and then I just go through my normal chi-squared test. O minus E, square it, and then divide it by whatever my E was. So you see here we get our numbers of 4.4, 0 0.48, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we get, end up getting our number of 9.63. So now we've got to see do we reject or fail to reject this distribution. Now looking at this, if we go back to what our critical value was, that was 7.779. And so that means that we would end up rejecting this null hypothesis because our critical value is less than our calculated. Our 9 point something, our calculated 9.63 is larger than 7.779. So that means we reject the null hypothesis in favor of our alternative, which basically tells us that the information that we have, based on the information gathered, we're not able to, uh, we're not able to confirm, or we would say that that data does not fit a Poisson distribution. Okay, so a Poisson, distri Poisson distribution is just another way of calculating the expected depending on what we have.